The remainder of the night had passed off relatively uneventful. The Egyptian authorities had removed substantial amounts of aid from the vehicles as part of an agreement with Israel to only allow medical aid through Rafah. But by dawn, convoy members, using a variety of methods, had managed to get the vast majority of aid back on board. Well, I'm not sure how politic it is to go into all the details. Uh, a lot of the aid was taken off the vehicles and somehow it made it back onto the vehicles. And 95%, uh, I would say, 90% anyway. Battered and bruised, but with their heads held high, the convoy volunteers made their way to Rafa for the final push to Gaza. But they did so without their lead vehicle, the fire engine from Manchester, and without the now iconic Viva Palestina boat. The two had become casualties of Israel's pressure on Egypt. They'd become symbols for the convoy, and therefore we very, very much wanted them to get through. But because they were so symbolic, I suspect that it is very important for this Israeli-Egyptian agreement that they did not go through, because it would have been seen that the Rafa border had been prized open even more. Viva Palestina was now just metres away from its final destination, three weeks after its set off from London. Once again, George Galloway faced the Palestinian border, this time with the convoy close behind. It was very emotional. When those gates opened and we walked through, it was a magical moment. We kissed the ground, uh, aware that there was a kind of throbbing mass of people uh, waiting for us just yards away. The media scrum was enormous, having been ignored <laughs> by so many cameras other than press TVs uh, for much of the journey. It was astounding to see the entire world's media desperately pushing their microphones into our faces. We traveled many miles. But the joy in our hearts as we enter this land of heroes were embraced by heroes is difficult to put into words. تابعت دخول القافلة من اللحظة الأولى التي وصلت إلى معبر رفح واليوم في الكتيبة الخضراء واستلام السيارات والمعونات. Residents of the battered and beleaguered Gaza Strip flooded onto the streets, overjoyed at finally meeting the expression of solidarity which had travelled 5,000 miles to make its point. But as Viva Palestina made its way to Gaza City, it was also met with grim reminders of why the mission had been initiated in the first place. They had made it to Gaza against all odds and at times in the face of stiff opposition. The moment had now arrived to transfer the vehicles and aid they'd brought. And in an audacious move, George Galloway personally, live on international television, handed over a substantial amount of cash to a government which had been deemed a terrorist organization by both Israel and the United States. This is politics. I was very clear and very careful about what I said. The word Hamas never crossed my lips. I'm not a supporter of Hamas as it happens, but I am a supporter of democracy. And I don't believe that anyone other than the Palestinians have the right to choose their own government. Uh, neither Washington nor London, still less Tel Aviv, has the right to tell the Palestinians who represents them. Viva Palestina had accomplished its goals. The 300 British volunteers, with millions of common people from around the world behind them, had broken the siege for a day at least. They'd refused to accept the narrative laid down by Israel and the international community. Their humble but symbolic effort reignited the issue of Palestine in the hearts of the people of North Africa and brought a new moment of hope to Gaza in the face of Israel's crushing blockade. But the story doesn't end here. I'm going back at the head along with uh, some very prominent people in the United States of a huge US convoy. 
and not a brick has been laid, not a pane of glass repaired, uh, nothing has changed. And that's uh, the biggest scandal of them all. You see, the Palestinians can absorb that kind of attack. They can absorb the death even of so many people, most of them, as you know, women and children. But it's the siege that's killing the whole people. And it's the siege that we have to break. The fact of the matter is that international law states that people have a right to trade with the rest of the world. International law states that everyone in the world should be freely allowed to travel within their own country, to freely exit and re-enter their own country. I mean, this is international law. And uh, it's time for the world community to begin enforcing its own standards. And if our governments aren't going to do it, then it's up to us as individual citizens, as, as people of conscience, to stand up and say we are going to uphold the law. In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. Just a war over stolen land Why do you think little bears are throwing stones at tanks? And we'll never really know how many people are dead They drop bombs on little girls while they sleep in their bed It's your choice, what you do with this message Don't get confused, I view this from a human perspective How many more resolutions have to be violated? How many more children have to be annihilated? Free, free Palestine, free, free Palestine, free, free Palestine.